Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Ratchet Collectors. And if you like pickups, retrospectives, unboxings, and anything basically on the Sega Dreamcast, you've come to the right place. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another update or another video. We're gonna start today's video with a general pickup video. And this has been a pickup video that's been in the making for like two months. I have amassed so many games and have gotten closer to completing the Sega Dreamcast library. I'm about 17 games away. And this large haul chipped away at a large sum of what I needed left for the Dreamcast. So we're gonna start off with a few Game Boy and 3DS games. I went to a local thrift store and I was walking around. I usually always go to the video game section, like always. And I came across Mega Man on the Game Boy. I would never played Mega Man on the Game Boy. I don't even have a Game Boy, original Game Boy that plays this. And when I saw that, I'm like, do I keep it or should I just, you know, try to sell it off? Or do I try to put it together with my little Game Boy collection? I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe if I come across an actual Game Boy for super cheap, I might give it a whirl. But right now I'm on the fence of what I'm gonna do with this, but it's a great find nonetheless. I was really surprised to actually find a Game Boy game. And I was cruising through the Facebook marketplace and I came across three 3DS games. I don't have a very large 3DS collection, so this is gonna make it about six games in total. I wasn't very big into collecting the 3DS. I have a 3DS console and I just never came across picking up games. If I came across cheap, I decided to pick them up and these were cheap. These were about $10 each, so $30 for a lot. So I got Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Party, and Mario Kart 7. About two months ago, I was talking to a fellow Dreamcast collector, and he was told me to pick up the Dreamcast Dream Shelf 4.0. This is just a custom case I made for it. It was just kind of loose. So it's basically a serial port adapter that goes into the back of the Dreamcast, and you put an SD card in there, and you could play games from the boot. I haven't figured out how to use this yet, which is unfortunate. This is about going on about two months now. I've messed around with it for a little bit and I came across some files and some ROMs to use, but I have never figured out how to use it because when I tried it, it won't let me boot past the menu on it. I just can't figure out what I need to do to try to get this to work. I bought a new SD card. I thought that was the problem. I haven't tested out the new SD card just yet. Again, on the Facebook market group, I came across two Dreamcast games and I need them for the collection. Obviously, I won't pick them up if I don't need them. So I came across Super Magnetic Neo. and Walt Disney World Magical Racing. They're both in amazing condition. I was looking really forward to playing Super Magnetic Neo. I've never played it before, but it just looks like an interesting game. Pickup videos give me the reason to actually play these games, give it a shot, and actually record some footage of it. So I haven't played either of these, and I'm looking forward to it. Magical Racing Tour is a Mario Kart clone with Disney characters, so that looks pretty interesting myself. I came across this local store in Orangeville. I just walked in, a friend of mine convinced me to go in there and see what they had because he was looking for some vinyls and a few other things. So I walk in and he had just an amazing amount of Dreamcast stuff. I was like amazed. He had three or four stacks, about 20 or 30 high of Dreamcast stuff and I was just pulling games out and what I needed. And as I'm pulling these out, I'm like, okay, I need that, I need this, I need this. And the pricing he had, because Sega wasn't a very popular system in that store, a lot of people are typically looking for Nintendo, Sony, Xbox stuff. Uh, so Sega stuff isn't something that he normally sells. So a lot of the stuff was mispriced by years. So he had it just on his shelf and he just forgot about repricing it because nobody was asking for it. So I came across Shadow Man, I paid $39 for it. It's roughly about that price. This reminds me of Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. 
I uh, have yet to play it, but just by the artwork itself, it just really reminds me of Legacy of Kane. Apparently, you can go into two different dimensions, a dead side and a live side, and you can just basically attack the dead and try to figure out what happened to your character and his family. So I'm looking forward to playing that and getting some footage of that. I'm not a completionist as far as, you know, trying to get variants and stuff like that, but if I can find a variant for a super cheap, I'll pick it up. And I found Virtua Tennis Sealed, the Sega All-Stars. I have about three or four Sega All-Stars games. I'm probably gonna grab them all eventually. There's a lot of them that are really, really pricey. Uh, Power Stone and Ready Rumble Boxing are two of the more sought after games that are more pricey. Every time I go to a store and I come across a South Park Dreamcast game, I always grab the wrong one. I always grab Chef's Love Shack thinking that that's the one I need, but I always bring it home and realize that, that is not the one I need. I always need it south park rally and i've made that mistake countless times i've even bought it off of ebay countless times thinking that i grabbed the right one thought i grabbed it at a great price once and then i found out it was chef's love shack that i grabbed and i already had it so i just basically swapped that out with the disc if it was a better condition or a better case and resold it but nice south park rally clean copy i paid 45 dollars when i bundled these all together i gave them a cash price i didn't pay anywhere near i paid about maybe 40 dollars each game so uh, it wasn't too bad i think it came out to 150 dollars. i think i paid 120 so it wasn't too bad i got a nice deal because i paid cash psychic force 2012 this looks a very interesting fighter. I've never played it and it looks really, really great. The back looks unbelievable. The graphics, the colors looks really good. I look forward to capturing some footage for this and show you guys some of that. But again, I paid $45 for it and, and an amazing collection, an amazing addition and an amazing condition this is. The biggest deal of that store, I came across one game that I definitely needed. Obviously, I needed all these games. But one game I was looking at paying an upwards of $200, but even then you're still paying uh, an exorbitant, exorbitant. amount of money for that. So I came across The Rain Terror's Realm. It's a horror game. It's kind of like a carrier or a Resident Evil. I would put it closer to the carrier side of horror genre. Usually Resident Evil is more of a polished type of a horror genre. These are just filler titles of horror that they put onto the console and they weren't very good. I've yet to play it, but I've heard it's not very good. But I paid $49 for it. This was or is going for roughly about $200 on stores or on eBay and I was able to grab it for $50 or $40 with the cash price. I was dumbfounded when I came across this. I'm like, thank God I came to the store when I did. It's an amazing addition and an amazing addition to the collection. The next batch of games are straight from eBay. I, you know, whenever I come across a little bit of money from selling some merch, if you guys are interested in any merchandise, I have some shirts from Tee Public, and if I come across a certain amount of sales, I'll put that towards something on eBay. I got this, Bass Fishing 2, and this was actually a, a pretty much an expensive game as well. This was about $80. I was actually surprised. Not sure what shot it up and what brought it back down. And this looks really clean and looks a lot nicer than the first one, even though the first one was an outstanding looking game for the Dreamcast. This just look, looks a lot nicer. Next up is Bomberman. This is one of those games that's on the exclusive list. This is the last a batch of games I need for the exclusive list of the Dreamcast. I'm gonna make a video once I get all of them. There's a, about five more left for my exclusive list. I'm looking forward to playing this. I've always been a big Bomberman fan. Filler titles galore, Disney's Dinosaur, MTV Skateboarding, Surf Rocket Racers, Speed Devils Online. I haven't played the online version of this. I played the original Speed Devils and there is a variant of Speed Devils which is the clean version without the devil's face on it. That one warrants about a $750 price tag. I'm not going for that. I already have Speed Devils the original. Now I have this one. If I come across it and again with trade value I may pick it up but it's not something I'm really looking forward to grabbing. Namco Museum. Next up is a fighting game that I was actually looking really forward to getting. Again, this is another title that I always make a mistake on thinking that I have. I have the King of Fighters Evolution. This is the Dream Style 99. I always make the mistake of which one I have. I know the labels or the box art looks totally different, but when you're just going off of name, I just forget that I have Evolution and not this one. So when I came to picking this up, I'm like, thank God I, I actually checked it more than once 
to make sure I didn't have this version. Again, King of Fighters Evolution, great game. I'm looking forward to this. And I wanted to play the Neo Geo Pocket version, but I've never played it. And I'm looking forward to actually maybe one day picking up a Neo Geo Pocket with the wire. But again, it's too expensive. And lastly, Maximum Pool. So my collection's got to about 17 games left. There are some larger style games that I do need, but there are mainly filler titles that are there that have gotten up in price just because they're hard to come by. So finding a good deal is kind of harder now. Knocking off a bunch of games off your list is something that anybody looks forward to doing. Me doing it for the Dreamcast is a lot harder than you would think, especially when you're getting down to the nitty gritty. Games are getting too pricey or some people are just overcharging them just because they're rare per se, even though they're not necessarily. What was your favorite game on the list that I picked up? Have you had any experience with any of these games? Let me know in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.